Hey guys, it's your girl Angelique Michelle here and I'm back with another Project Inspire Positivity video for you guys. Today I'm going to be starting our cover of the John Maxwell 101 series and I'm super excited for you. We are going to start with uh, Attitude 101. So it's just this cute little book. All of the books in these 101 series are very small, about 100 pages, uh, if that at the most. Super easy to read and they just talk about just different things that will help you succeed. So this one we are doing Attitude 101. Next week we'll be covering Self um, Improvement 101. So I'm super excited. So definitely stay tuned for these videos. We are going to be having a new video every Wednesday for our Wednesday Wake Ups uh, in the month of July and August for 2017. So we're starting with Attitude 101. I of course have my notebook because I took a ton of notes so I will be reading from this to go over and I'm basically just going to give you guys a summary of what it is what I've learned I have tons of quotes in here that I want to share with you guys and then I really want you to think about it because this is treat this as like a summer class we are going to be reading different things and really just do like a life overhaul and a life makeover just so that we get energized and reset before the school year starts or just before we go back into fall and get back in the swing of things so think of this as our summer reset so part one of attitude 101 is the impact of attitude attitude is always a player on your team and John goes in and he explains uh, the importance of attitude there are five here he says that attitudes have the power to lift up or tear down your team they can bound they compound when exposed to others and negative attitudes will always compound faster than positive ones attitudes are subjective so identifying the wrong one can be difficult and so he also says that attitude is really about how a person is that overflows into how he acts. Um, and there are several rotten attitudes that he has listed here. An inability to admit wrongdoing, failure to forgive, petty jealousy, the disease of me, which leads to the which leads to the defeat of us. So always thinking that you're the most important part of the team or you're just the most important player at work. A critical spirit and a desire to hog all of the credit. So whenever things go right, you think it's only because of your ideas and what you did and that it wasn't a group effort. He also says that rotten attitudes left alone will ruin everything. And Thomas Jefferson even said, nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. And John bounces off of that and says, your attitude and your potential go hand in hand and I find that so true and he also says that attitudes determine your success or your failure which is also very true my favorite quote from John Maxwell as you guys know is your attitude not your aptitude will determine your altitude so let's keep that in mind he then goes on and he creates these seven axioms about attitude one our attitude determines our approach to life Two, our attitude determines our relationships with people. Three, often our attitude is the only difference between success and failure. Four, our attitude at the beginning of a task will affect its outcome more than anything else. So how you see things and how you act on things will affect the outcome, your attitude. Five, our attitudes can turn our problems into blessings. J. Sidlow Baxter said, what is the difference between an obstacle and an opportunity? Our attitude towards it. Every opportunity has an obstacle and every obstacle has an opportunity. Six, our attitude can give us an uncommonly positive perspective. And seven, your attitude is not automatically good because you are a religious person. So for those of you who don't know, John C. Maxwell led a church for several years, very accomplished. Um, and I find that quote, your attitude is not automatically good because you are a religious person person just because you go to church every week just because you pray doesn't mean you have a positive outlook on life doesn't mean you have a good attitude just because you believe in the Lord and I think that's very powerful so now that we know 
about the impact of attitude, part two is going to tell us the formation of the attitude, how our, how we get our attitudes, what affects our attitudes. And he starts off by saying a lot goes into an attitude, but a lot more comes out of it. And he says that there are several factors of personality and attitude and they all compound on each other as you grow up so you start off with your inherent personality your temperament what you're born with and then environment plays a role then your word expression then adult acceptance and affirmations your self-image starts to play a role and exposure to new experiences you know in school maybe travel things like that then your peers and your physical appearance and then later on in life you have your marriage your family your job success things like this these are all things that are going to determine what kind of attitude that you have and he goes on to explain why this is important because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care so he's saying that these factors are going to directly relate into that and how well you do as a leader. And he says that your attitude towards life is still under construction. It is continuous. It is a continuous progression. You're constantly working on it. It goes day by day. New experience that come up we're, are going to affect your attitude and change the way you think about things. So it's always under construction. It's never just set in stone. And he says the key to having a good attitude is the willingness to change. So you have to make that decision to change, to be a more positive person, to have a better attitude, have a better outlook on life. And he says who we are today is the result of the choices we made yesterday. Tomorrow we will be what we choose today. So to change means to choose to change. And he says there are several choices that we have to make when we are choosing to change. Choice number one, we must evaluate our present attitude. And how do we do that? We identify problem feelings, problem behavior, and problem thinking because we are the sum of our thoughts. We have to find the clarifying truth, secure commitment, plan, and carry out our choice. So two, Choice two, we realize that faith is stronger than fear. If you have faith in yourself and you believe you can accomplish that, that is going to be more powerful than the fear of failure, which we're also going to get into failure later. But choice three, we must write a person, write a statement of purpose. So we have to write specifically what, what we want to accomplish each day. We have to verbalize that to someone who's going to encourage us and motivate us and empower us to act on it and be that person and to just do better. And three, we have to take action on our goal each day because it is a continuous progression. To change, you must take action. Mm. Choice four, we have to have the desire to change. Fall in love with the challenge of change and watch the desire to change grow. Choice five, live one day at a time because it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time and it's going to be a continuous battle that you're doing. Choice six, change your thought patterns. This is interesting. He says the major premise is we can control our thoughts. Minor premise, our feelings come from our thoughts. So conclusion, we can control our feelings by learning to change how we think. Choice number seven, develop good habits. An attitude is nothing more than a habit of thought. So how do we develop these good habits? We must first list our bad habits. What is the original cause of these bad habits and what are supporting causes of these bad habits? We must determine a positive habit to replace the bad habit. And think about that good habit, its benefits and its results. And then we must take action to develop this habit. Daily act upon the habit for reinforcement and reward ourselves by noting one of the benefits. So we are constantly, constantly working on these good habits to get rid of the bad habits. And it's a daily Thing. We're taking action each day to implement these new good habits for a positive attitude. And choice number eight, continually choose to have a right attitude. The greatest battle you rage against failure occurs on the inside, not the outside. And that is your attitude. And so he goes on to explain that these are all big factors 
and what happens when you face adversity and when you fail. And when we fail, we must learn to fail forward. We must learn from those failures. And he says, in order to achieve your dreams, you must embrace adversity and make failure a regular part of your life. If you're not failing, you're not moving forward. Dr. Joyce Brothers said, a person interested in success has to learn to view failure as a healthy, inevitable part of the process of getting to the top. And he says there are several key reasons on why we need to embrace adversity and keep on persevering and keep on uh, mo working through it. Adversary creates resilience, develops maturity, pushes the envelopes of accepted performance, making us better, provides greater opportunities, prompts innovation, brings unexpected benefits, and it motivates us to do better and to be better. Pat McCormick said, I think failure is one of the great motivators. So now that we know the impact of attitude and we know the formation of attitude, part three is going to tell us the future with the right attitude, what we can accomplish if we have the right attitude. And he starts off by saying, every successful person is someone who failed, yet never regarded himself as a failure. So there are seven abilities needed to fail forward, seven abilities that we need to keep moving forward after we fail and to learn after that failure. He says we need to reject rejection. James Allen said a man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of his thought. So if we think of failure as a failure and we get down on ourselves and we get negative, we're never going to get back up and we're never going to achieve what we want it to. Two, see failure as temporary. Three, see failure as isolated incidents. Four, keep our expectations realistic. We're not going to make it to the top overnight. It's a continuous battle and it's a continuous work in progress. Five, focus on strengths. Bob Patera said, what distinguishes winners from losers is that winners concentrate at all times on what they can do, not on what they can't do. Six, vary approaches to achievement. If you can't achieve it one way, try a different method. Seven, bounce back. Learn from what you're doing. If you fall down, get right back up again. You have to bounce back. And our attitude determines how far we go on the success journey. So John Maxwell then goes into the wrong attitude about success and about wealth, but I want to focus on what he thinks are the right attitudes about success. And John defines success. He says, success is knowing your purpose in life, growing to reach your maximum potential, and sowing seeds that benefits others. And we're going to go into each one of these as well. So knowing your purpose, oh, there's several good quotes in this one. So Henry J. Kaser said, the evidence is overwhelming that you cannot begin to achieve your best unless you set some aim in life. You can't keep uh, just going with the flow and being nonchalant about things. You have to set goals in life to become the best version of you. Victor Frankl said, everyone has his own specific vocation or mission in life. Everyone must carry out a concrete assignment that demands fulfillment. Therein, he cannot be replaced, nor can his life be repeated. Thus, everyone's task is as unique as his specific opportunity to implement it. Meaning, each one of us is different, and we're all here to do something different. Maybe we're here to do the same thing, but we have different methods because we will all have different opportunities to accomplish it. So, how do we know what our purpose is? We must first know, for what am I searching for? Why was I created? Do I believe in my potential? And when do I start? Those are the four questions that you need to answer your, ask yourself and answer. Write them down if you have to, but I can tell you the answer number four. When do I start? You start right now. With this video, you guys are starting right now. The second part of the definition of success, growing your potential. John says that we can do anything, but we can't do everything. We must concentrate on one main goal, concentrate on continual improvement, we have to forget the past because the past is not going to bring us into our future. And we must focus on the future. So those are the four things that we have to do for growing our potential. And then the third part of the definition, sowing seeds that benefits others. These have a few good quotes in here as well. Albert Schwartzer said, the purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help others. Danny Thomas went on to say, success in life has nothing to do with what you gain in life or accomplish for yourself. It's what you do 
for others. And John said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. So that's what I want to leave you guys with. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. These are the right attitudes to have to be a successful person, to be a successful leader, to just be a wonderful, good person. You have to know these things. You have to work on your attitude. You have to just be a positive person because you're going to get more, you're, you're going to get a lot further in life and a lot more out of life if you think that way, if you are a positive person. So I'll actually leave you with my favorite quote, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Remember to inspire some positivity today, guys, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.